So, I've had the T120 Buddy Eakins for a while now, and I've clocked just over 2,000 glorious miles. In this review, I will cover my thoughts on what the bike has been like to live with. I will cover some modification updates and also discuss its reliability and a few slight niggles. Now, COVID, a menace to all man, has limited some of the use of the bike for me, but that said, it has not stopped me having some wonderful rides. Now, I purchased the Budikin Special Edition because, as standard, it already had some of the extras on the bike that I would have upgraded myself. It had the LED indicators, the white piped black seat, the Monza fuel cap, bar end mirrors, and it also had swapped out engine badges. Now, I'm going to be honest, I would have preferred a model with a black and white tank, but it wasn't available when I purchased this model. Although, that said, once I saw the Buddy King's colour scheme, I fell in love with it. That paintwork is glorious, and the Heritage Triumph Tank logos just look great. Now, I'm going to be honest, even though it was a special edition, there were a few extras that were lost or had been removed from the Buddy King's model that I would have preferred. Features that would have remained on the standard T120. Let me explain. Now, those knurled grips are great, but I lost the heated grips of the standard with T120. I would have liked to keep that option, as they do work great when riding out on those chilly days. And, for some mad styling reason, they also removed the grab rails, which is a pain. The grab rails are really useful when riding with a pillion or manoeuvring the 224 plus kilo dry weight of the bike. Yes, it's pretty heavy. Now I could live without the heated grips, but not the grab rails. So I negotiated the rails being fitted when I purchased the bike. It makes life so much easier and personally, I think it looks better. Now I did like the bike pretty much out of the box, just as it came. But I did want to add some subtle personal styling just to add my touch. It is a keeper after all and I do not intend on parting with it. So I wanted to add my own little touches. When I purchased the bike I had a budget for swapping out the exhaust and I was considering the Vance and Hines upgrade. However, once I heard the original stock sound and compared it with a bike with the optional Vance and Hines, I noticed really there wasn't an awful lot of difference. So I opted to save my money and spend it on a few trinkets. Now, I'm going to be honest, I do like a slightly louder set of pipes. Nothing obscene, just a nice louder tone. So, the jewelry's out. I have considered fitting the Motone Custom Satin Retail Pipes, but I'm not sure if they will be loud enough for me, as I would still like to hear them fitted to another bike before I purchase them. Now, I like the styling options that Motone Customs do for the Triumph. The quality of the parts they engineer and produce in-house are exemplary and they are well worth paying the extra expense over cheaper Chinese eBay bits. You've no doubt heard the saying, you pay your money and takes your chance. Well, I prefer not to take the chance and I wasn't disappointed with the parts I purchased from Motone. Sometimes it's just worth paying that bit extra for what you get. I'd rather wait and buy quality than splash out on cheap inferior bits. That's me. Now I've opted for the custom Union Jack radiator grill which I think just looks the business. It's well made and is machined billet aluminium and powder coated. It's been on the bike since new and it looks great. It's a bit pricey but it's quality. I also fitted Triumph's own sump guard. I just like the look of it and it does a good job protecting the engine and keeping some of the muck off. Now keeping the Union Jack vibe going, I exchanged the brake oil master cylinder cover for the blacked out Billy Union Jack version. And I also have a thing for brass, so I swapped out the gear change lever for a nice brass one.
And while on the brass theme, I also fitted the machine brass tyre valve caps. They look great against the chrome wire wheels. Now, over the winter, I'm going to be adding a few more styling trinkets to the bike. Part of a winter upgrade project. So, if you're interested, please subscribe to the channel to be kept updated. Right, so what's a bike been reliability wise? Well, fit and finish have been perfect, so no issues there. It's what you'd expect from a bike with a premium price. And mechanically, well, it rides superb and it hasn't put a foot wrong. That said though, there are just a few observations. Now, I do notice the gearbox can be a little stiff if it's not run for a week or so, even though starting the bike I normally leave it running for a few minutes before riding off. Now let me be clear it has only happened a few times. Now I'm aware of the controversy is well published on other sites and forums and that is of the early bikes right up to 2019 having had some problems with gearboxes sticking. Before laying out my hard earned pennies I had been reliably informed that this issue been resolved on the later bikes 2019 and subsequent bikes thereafter. Now I'm going to be honest I've not heard of anybody personally with a recent 2020 or 2021 bike having the same gearbox problems but I will keep an eye on it and let you know if it develops into anything significant. Fingers crossed it was just because of lack of use. The gearbox on my bike does actually loosen up quickly once it's been running through the gears a couple of times and it was only in second up to third going up the box and not going down. Therefore at this moment in time I'm not really concerned but given the controversy it was an alarming observation nonetheless. Now the other problem I did find on the bike from you was it was a little jerky on the throttle riding in slow traffic or in the city. Now to be honest I did just knock the bike into the rain mould when in traffic and that stopped it. To be honest though, my Yamaha XSR900 was the same from you, in fact it was even worse. Although again I have also noticed now the Triumph has done a few miles, that it does not seem to happen. Now I know what you're going to say, that could be because I've just gotten used to it. But to be honest, I think it just doesn't do it anymore. Maybe it was the throttle grip sticking from you. A few of my subscribers have noticed the same on their T120s and Speed Twins for that matter. Some have even opted for all sorts of solutions from power adapters that alter the CPU to simple throttle spacers. I would advise waiting a while as it does, well, in my case, seem to rectify itself without any expense. Now, the bike is still fantastic to ride, loads of power through the range. That's why I chose the 1200, especially after having the rather brutal Yamaha XSR900. I didn't want to feel as though I was compromising too much on power. I'm going to be honest though, the T120 is easy to ride, but for a novice rider, straight out of passing a test, or he's just new to bigger bikes, I would consider the T100. The T100 is lighter, and a little bit more nimble and easy to ride and manoeuvre without losing any of the style. Now, I've said it before, the T120 is a gentleman's steed. It will win no competitions on the twisties, as it does feel a little lazy on the tight corners due to that low down planted distribution of weight. But this is not a sports bike. It's not what the bike is about. It is a bike that is equally at home on the A-roads and highways and byways and sweeping bends. It's a leisurely ride for those that want to arrive in style. It is, after all, a quintessential true British bike. It is an icon. You can sit on that seat all day without any aches or crakes, which is great, especially if, like me, you're over 50. The reach on the bars is great and it's nice and comfortable. You can sit up straight or manoeuvre your backside slightly back if you want to lean slightly forward. Now, if you're vertically challenged, most people will still be able to put both feet on the ground, especially if you're over 5 or 8. 
as the seat height is only 785 millimeters, which is 31 inches in old money. But remember, once you sit on the bike, it will lower a bit. I am only a 30 inch leg and both my feet easily sit flat on the floor. Despite that 224 kilo dry weight, the bike is easy to manoeuvre and filter in traffic. It's just a dream to commute on, whether on the A roads or in the city. And so for me, a man of leisure, who likes to amble up to his favourite city coffee shops, arrive in comfort and in style, dressed without looking like I've been to a racetrack, and sit and read my newspaper, big smile on my face, having felt as though I've not had any back-breaking journey. Then this bike is a perfect ride. I just love it. So, if you want a stylish, premium bike, loads of heritage, as reliable, well-made, and easy to ride, that sounds great and puts a big smile on your face every time you ride it, then maybe, just maybe, the Triumph Bonneville is the bike for you. So, until next time, please consider subscribing to the channel, BFN, and bye for now.